Welcome to Big Shoulders, the show where we explore the civic tech space here in Chicago. Today, I am absolutely delighted to have with me uh, VP and distinguished analyst with the IT advisory and research firm Gardner, Doug Laney. Doug, thanks for coming today. Thanks for having me, Adam. Really appreciate it. Uh, Doug specializes in advising his clients on information strategy and how to actually monetize data, which is really interesting. Uh, it's a field that's called infonomics. So let's start with infonomics. Mm. Doug, this is a term that you not only write extensively about, you actually coined the phrase. <coughs> Tell us about infonomics. Yeah, so there's a, there's a well, uh, the backstory for infonomics is not actually a, a much of a happy story. It actually has its genesis in the 9-11 uh, the terrorist attacks. So after the, the attacks of the, uh, the Twin Towers, many clients started lamenting not only, of course, the, the tragic loss of life, but also the loss of their data. So naturally what they did w was submit claims to their insurers for the value of the data they lost, and the insurers said, well, well, well hold on a second, we don't think that information constitutes uh, property. And so, uh, actually a number of court cases ensued and we, we were tracking about a, a dozen or so different court cases around the world where one party claims that uh, information has been damaged or lost or misused um, and, uh, you know, are claiming it as, uh, as a property loss. Now the insurance company said, you know, we don't agree that information is property and in fact what the insurance industry did was change the standard language in the commercial general liability policy standard um, the policy template to exclude information as a, as property explicitly explicitly the month after 9/11. So literally, they didn't wait for the dust to settle, and so not to be outdone, the accounting industry uh, a couple of years later uh, modified a, uh, uh, a key. Uh, uh, accounting standard uh, in for IAS 38 to ex explicitly prohibit the capitalization of information on balance sheets. So here we are today where a lot of organizations are starting to treat information as an asset, even monetize it in, in direct ways, um, and uh, the insurance industry, the accounting profession are, are prohibiting that. So you know, we kind of came up with the idea back in the late 90s that information was becoming more of an asset. Uh, it actually meets the criteria of a balance sheet asset. It's owned and controlled by an organization, it's exchangeable for cash, and it generates uh, what accountants call a probable future economic benefit. But still, you know, here we are today, 80 some years after the formation of the SEC and the kind of the current accounting asset classes, and information is de denied asset status. So, uh, and that was a few years yeah, ago. So, what yeah. about today? So, uh, today, you know, we just see a lot of organizations, you know, s uh, sorting out how to monetize and use information as an asset. We actually found that uh, through some of our, our research at Gartner that companies that are more information centric, more information savvy, um, actually have market to book values significantly higher than than the norm. So, there's something that while the accountants don't recognize information as an asset. Uh, savvy investors are starting to recognize the kinds of companies that are doing more with data. They have data scientists, they have chief data officers, they have um, uh, enterprise data governance functions, and those are the kinds of companies that, that uh, receive these market to book value uh, premiums over the norm. It's really, really fascinating. There are other studies as well, some academic studies that indicate the same thing. So infonomics, mm -hmm. information, economics, right. the monetization of mm -hmm. information as an asset. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like the investment community is a step ahead of the accounting, insurance, et cetera. As they should be, as, right. <laughs> as they often mm -hmm. are. Um, you were recently quoted in the Wall Street Journal regarding uh, an interesting nuance of monetizing mm -hmm. data, and that's how it's treated in a Chapter 11 situation. Tell us right, about right. that. Yeah, we're always on the lookout for how organizations and how the markets um, are, are recognizing information as, as an asset. And what we saw recently was, uh, and this was this is public, that uh, Caesars Entertainment and uh, Radio Shack are both going through Chapter 11, or Caesars is going through a restructuring, and. What we learned is that their investors, their, their creditors, have determined that the most valuable asset that Radio Shack and Caesars have is, isn't their property, surprisingly, especially for Caesars, right. it's the value of their, their customer data, which I think for Caesars was valued at over a billion dollars, uh, even though it's not a line item on the, on the balance sheet. 
that actually makes a lot yeah. of sense when you think about how much data is being tracked by a group like Caesars. Right. Uh, interesting that, that yeah. Radio Shack was part of that as well. Yeah, and the, uh, I think it was the SEC or someone had to, some government agency had to step in to say, listen, we need you to respect the privacy of this data even as you transfer yeah. it to another owner. And there are no formal regulations around this, but at least the government is, is heads up to the, the, the challenges of data being actually sold. See, when most people sell data, they're not selling data, they're licensing it. In this case, data ownership to the extent that data can actually be owned, and that's debatable, is actually transferring hands. So, that's really interesting mm -hmm. because to the extent that um, a person has uh, approved of giving up some mm -hmm. of their personal data to right. one group, Caesars, Radio mm -hmm. Shack, mm -hmm. now it's gonna be owned by somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like it's breaking new ground as well. There's always that risk that when you, you, know, when you share your data with someone that, that ownership is going to, going to be transferred. It's often not explicit in terms and conditions um, for the companies that you do business with, um, but you know, sometimes it is. If you, we looked at the, um, the acquisition of WhatsApp by Facebook mm -hmm. for 19 was a 19 billion dollars, which people thought was just extreme, given you know how valuable could all those customers possibly be, and uh, and I contended that well, hey, it wasn't the customers that that they were valuing; it was the value of the information. Um, 100 million posts, 50 million images per day, um, and when I looked at the terms and conditions, I knew right away that I was what I was going to find, which was that WhatsApp's terms and conditions said, we can do whatever we want with the data. You retain the rights to it, you retain the, uh, the rights to it or ownership of it because they don't want any liability. Sure. But they want access, unfettered access to do whatever they want with the data. And I think when the Facebook data scientists saw that they had this unfettered access to do whatever they wanted with the data, I think they probably just wet their pants. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the other side of it. <coughs> so that's uh, mm -hmm. the privacy issue. Let's take a look at open data. Okay. So when you're monetizing data, when you're mm -hmm. getting economic value out right. of that data, when it's become an asset, mm -hmm. What does that mean? How does it relate to open data? Okay, well open data is sort of a close cousin of monetized data. There's a spectrum of sharing data that ranges from you know, maintaining it internally to sharing it across departments to sharing it with customers, suppliers, and partners to freely opening it up into the open marketplace to you know, selling it um, or um, or monetizing it more in more indirect ways. So open data is the, the situation where you uh, take an, uh, an information asset and you're making it freely available. Uh, formally, if you license it as open data, there are certain restrictions on how others can use that data, um, uh, uh, meaning that they, they can't discriminate. Um, they have to attribute it back to the source and so forth. There are 11 or so different kind of conditions. But you know, companies have to make the decision today whether they want to really freely open data and use it to gain some, some reputational benefits or uh, something like that versus um, treating it as an actual corporate asset and monetizing it in, in some way, either you know, selling it. Some companies, there are some um, uh, grocers, for example, that one in particular that is uh, um, selling its data to consumer packaged good partners and making a hundred million dollars a year of incremental revenue by just selling their, the their data. data. So we've been getting a lot of calls uh, from our clients on how they can emulate that kind of thing. But you know, you don't have to sell your data to monetize it. There are other ways to monetize your data. You can barter it for goods and services. Um, you can make it available to partners to uh, form closer relationships. So there's there are a variety of ways to monetize data. And I think I saw you had written somewhere about um, the risks of open data, and I yes. assume that they're financial yeah. risks. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, when you, anytime you're, you're sharing anything openly, you're giving up something about the company. So, um, you know, people ask me why do, why uh, isn't information an asset on the balance sheet? And you know, I think the answer to that is, you know, executives tend to influence accounting. You know, business executives, the icons of industry, tend to influence accounting regulations. You know, raise your hand if you're an executive that really wants to report on more than you already do publicly. Right. right. So most companies don't want to disclose more than they do publicly. Like I said, there's some reputational benefits perhaps to doing that or relationship benefits to doing that. But um, increasingly the decision, organizations are making, leaders or business leaders are making a conscious decision as to whether to freely open data for those kind of soft benefits sure. or 
find ways to more structurally monetize it. And that's so, important to mm -hmm. civic technology, because as I said, that yeah. open data is the food for civic technology. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about a specific type of organization. Okay. Give me some examples of mm -hmm. some governments that are doing interesting things in terms of open data and wow. economics. Um, so interestingly, there have been government mandates around the world, uh, not just in the US, but Australia, UK, I think in, even in India and other countries, and locally as well, in, in Chicago here, mandates to open up data, to make data available. So there are hackathons that happen here in Chicago. Um, you can now uh, look for where there are, uh, we're coming out of winter now, but you can look for where there are warming centers, mm -hmm. right, in the, uh, in Chicago for the homeless, uh, what the hours are, what the locations are, there's other types of things that are mapped um, on, on uh, uh, you intersected with geo, geolocation data. Um, so governments are doing really, you know, really interesting things uh, globally and, and locally as well. Now, if anybody who's watching wants um, to get more up to speed on infonomics, they mm -hmm. want to learn about monetizing data, right. treating data as an asset. What advice do you have for them? Um, well, the first thing is, you know, you really need to recognize information is an asset. You know, forget what the accountants are saying. I'm not saying kill the accountants, but forget what the accountants are saying. Uh, and you will recognize that information meets the criteria of an asset and that, that as an organization, you're going to benefit if you actually treat it as, as an asset. Um, for more on Infonomics, I maintain the Infonomics Wikipedia page. There are a number of articles that I've written and others have written on the, on the topic of monetizing data, information's value. Um, Gardner right now is, is, a, is about to publish some models on how to quantify the value of data. So a lot of organizations should be thinking about how to not only inventory their information assets, um, because that's really the first step in monetizing anything, is to know what you have, uh, and then also to quantify its value as if it were a balance sheet asset. And I've developed some models to help companies do that. We've worked with a number of, of clients to help them quantify the value of their data to make more intelligent decisions about information management, about data monetization, and so forth. So, uh, you know, a lot of resources uh, out there, and it's increasingly a, a very hot topic that we're tracking. Terrific. And yeah. just to be clear, Doug was not advocating bringing any harm to any accountants or even insurance companies. So, <laughs> no. thank you for that. <laughs> Doug, thank you very much for being Thanks, here today. Great to this be with you. This has been Big Shoulders.